Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds, and March represents the fourth year since the beginning of the triple meltdowns at Fukushima Daiichi. These were disasters that were man-made. Tokyo Electric would have you believe that they're the victim of an unimaginable tsunami that rose up from the ocean and destroyed the plant. But in fact, they are the perpetrators of this disaster. They knew in 1965 that a tsunami this size or even bigger could rise up, and they chose to keep the tsunami walls short to save money. The same sense of skewed priorities occurred while the disaster was occurring. Tokyo Electric underestimated the releases, they underestimated the exposure to people, they underestimated the time to recover and the cost to recover. Does that mean that Tokyo Electric is incompetent? I don't think so. I've seen the same behavior occur at Three Mile Island, at Chernobyl, and now at Fukushima. The response of a bureaucracy in a disaster like Fukushima is to save the bureaucracy and to save nuclear power. Nuclear power means a lot more to the bureaucrats than the health and safety of the people that they're supposed to be protecting. With us today is Chiho Kaneko. Chiho is a member of the board at Fairwinds and recently returned from Japan. Hi Chiho. Hi Arnie. I wanted you to share with us your impressions having just come back four years after this disaster. They're really worried about their towns and villages um, just disappearing completely, you know, just going out, which is a palpable uh, sort of a reality, you know. And then people's also um, love of the place, which is, a different, which is different from their love of the town or village, but their love of the mountains and the rivers you know, that's a very strong desire. I'd like to talk a little bit about the collection of all of this radioactive material all throughout the, the, the state of, of the Fukushima prefecture. Can you tell us what you saw? You know, you have this huge uh, bales uh, that contain, like plastic bales, I think contain radioactive soil and maybe some grass um, piled up in some cases alongside you know uh, public uh, roadways in other areas maybe just in uh, abandoned rice fields or something it's almost like a in incredible i mean i i couldn't believe my eyes you know sometimes the the piles are like five or six uh, bag high you know so I, at first when I saw it, is that some kind of construction, building construction or something? But no, it was they're just uh, piling those uh, bags on top of each other because there is really no, not enough place to put them. And you know, the, the bags are designed to last for three years, but the radioactivity inside them will last for 300 years. So as the bags break down, that radiation then gets into the groundwater and recontaminates the communities that are supposed to be now cleaned. Um, I spoke um, with a woman who owns a gas station uh, with her son in the village of Kawauchi. What's, what's the most important thing? I think it's the family, she said. And she said unequivocally that fact that Japanese government is trying to restart nuclear power plants is completely outrageous. It's out of question. She doesn't want anybody else suffer like this anymore. No, uh, no disaster like this should ever be allowed to happen. But as long as nuclear power plants operate, you cannot guarantee that disaster like this will never happen. You cannot guarantee. What I have witnessed in the past four years really reinforced the impression that once a nuclear disaster happens, nobody, nobody, not a government, not the, uh, the nuclear industry, nobody can control the result. It's spread, it's time span, it's effect on communities. They cannot control. The genie's out of the bottle. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. <laughs>